You may not think about it, but when a meteorite strikes the Earth's surface, not only does it do a lot of destructive damage that we see in the form of craters, but there's also a lot of metamorphism that happens. And we call this impact or shock metamorphism. This one is different from the other types in that meteorites striking the Earth's surface are not constant geologic processes that are always going on as the Earth changes dynamically, right? They happen pretty randomly just based on if objects from space enter the Earth's atmosphere and are sent spiraling towards the Earth and don't burn up before they reach the surface. But let's say we have something that comes down, a trail of it, smacks right there, boom. Let's say that's a meteorite. Make it look a bit more like a rock. So that's a large object, right? It's traveling with some tangential and some rotational velocity, and it's striking the Earth's surface. And what that's doing, right, it's stopping the motion. So right away you should be thinking, okay, that thing is losing a ton of energy. That moving object is losing a ton of energy. That's getting absorbed by the surface. So you can think of it, that energy is all going into the surface, right? And so that's where what happens to the rock that makes it form the crater? Well, we're gonna see things like shattering, which is of course another way of saying the rock fractures, right? It stores enough energy that it reaches a strain and a stress that are beyond what the rock can actually support. You're gonna see it shatter. You're gonna see it pulverized into tiny little pieces. And finally, because not all of the mechanical energy from this moving object is transferred into mechanical energy in the rock, some of it, you can think about it, goes to heat, right? You know, anytime you have two objects that collide with one another, it's not going to be a perfect transfer of mechanical energy. There's going to be some that's lost to heat that you might call a, a frictional loss of energy. So in this case, you've got a ton of energy, sometimes enough to melt some of that surrounding rock. And so these things should start to, to add up, right? Shattering and pulverization, we might associate that with huge amounts of pressure. Melting, we might associate that with huge amounts of heat. Heat and pressure, two create key ingredients for metamorphism. So all the actors are here. Now what actually happens? Well, this thing hits the surface and then both the meteorite and the surface are gonna take a lot of damage. The meteorite obviously gets broken it shatters, much like the ground. You'll have bits and pieces flying everywhere. You know, and this is where people start to find shards of space rock that you'll see on display in certain geology museums. So that thing breaks apart. You're going to see a giant indent where it strikes. Obviously, that's the formation of the crater. And then the rock below here is going to be broken. And then the actual metamorphism happens where you have melting, of the rock below, and it's going to fuse with broken fragments of the other rock. It's going to fuse with either, right, so if this heats up, if this layer here begins to heat up and melts, then it may fuse with the layer underneath it in a little region here. And so let's say at this interface here, we're going to have new rock, some new metamorphosed rock all in this region where you had it hot enough to melt the overlaying layer where it fuses with the lower layer. And then at the surface, you'll have smaller metamorphosed rocks where you have these glass rich ejecta from the meteorite fusing with some of the melted fragments down here, right? So these things land and let's say the surface here is all melted. They're all gonna, you know, they're getting they're gonna adhere to that liquid surface. And then as it cools, it's gonna form a sort of Frankenstein's monster of these <laughs> broken rocks uh, that we call impactiles. You can remember that because, well, they're formed from the impact, melting and breaking from the impact, impactiles. And these will form much less uniformly, right? You could have some wherever there's both broken shards of the meteor, broken shards of this top layer of rock and melting rock together. Um, 
So you'll see those just mixed in throughout your crater. And I'll reiterate, these are the product of melting and fusing. And that's all there really is to impact or shock metamorphism. It's pretty easy to think about because it's a very direct action, right? You might think of it as an attack at the Earth's surface that causes these things. Not too interesting as far as geologically analyzing Earth's history into it. But it's really cool if you're thinking about, you know, the actual impacts of space, you know, extraterrestrial rocks coming to our surface and how they really interact in some interesting geological ways. So, I don't know. That may be useful to you. It may just be a fun fact. But hope you learned something.